I already did a review of the Pulse Smart Pen in the toolbox and today I would like to demonstrate the Echo Smart Pen which is sort of a sister product to this one or the next version. And it has a few more features. I would like to highlight those differences and also take the chance to show how the installation and registration process is with the um, Livescribe uh, Smart Pens. Just to remind you, if you read on the website, we have lots of uh, paper products at Learning Lab, which we give away for free. You can have a flip notepad, moleskins, A5 notebooks and letter notebooks. We even have refill pen tips. So if your smart pen runs out of ink, we have a lot of uh, refills here. And uh, this is for free because we have like a big box of it and we will never use it ourselves. So for anyone at DTU using the smart pens, please just come over to our office and uh, pick up some of this stuff. So uh, in the box with the Echo smart pen, you get the paper product. This is an A4 notebook in a very nice sleeve, I think. And uh, the pen itself, of course. So um, it looks like this, slightly different from the Pulse smart pen. It uh, has a USB cable you can plug directly into the end of the pen. And also you can put the headset into the end of the pen here. And uh, the headset will not only allow you to listen to the audio from the pen when you play back a pen cast with it, but also it has a tiny microphone as far as I know, which allows you to record the uh, pen cast audio with a slightly better quality than otherwise. So the installation process is according to the guides that came with the box. Uh, to install the Livescribe desktop, you just download it from their website. And this is what I've done at this point. So I'm just waiting now to take the next step to registration. And there we go. So at this point, it asks me to apply the uh, smart pen to a USB port, so I dock it and we should now see that the computer registers the new hardware. Yes, that should be the pen name and we do the registration right away. So I would like to create a new account. Cool. There's one thing I haven't done yet, which is configuring the time and date on the pen. And that is done in a, in a funny way. So um, along with the pen came this little book. And uh, because it has the Anoto dot pattern in the background, you can actually use it to set time. So this button on the paper uh, says set time. Set, set time. And now I type in the hour. So. so when you are ready with the registration process, having installed the Livescribe desktop as well, you are now ready to use your pen. And you simply open the uh, A4 notebook, find the first page, and you begin to write. But of course, you need to make sure your pen is turned on. You see that in the display. So I now write, this is my first test. And we could also try the recording functionality. Okay, so now it records. I draw the circle, center, radius, like that. Stop. And I could now try a replay. Draw the circle, center, radius. Center, okay. Radius. So everything seems to work just like it did with the Pulse Smart Pen. The next thing would be to connect the pen to the computer and see what happens when I do that. So it seems the Smart Pen is detected. It is probably going to transfer as it's doing right now, we see here. And now we see the A5 starter notebook pops up. I choose it and the page I just made is right here. I could open it up and play back. Draw the circle, sensor, radius. Like okay, that. so let's try to share this as a pen cast. So I right click, share pages with the online community and share. So it's now uploading the pencast. It has been done successfully. I can go to the Livescribe online. And there we go. We have the pencast online, it seems. So let's 
Let's test it. Full screen. Playback. So far, it works just as expected as the Pulse Smart Pen. So we have two different pen products to choose between the Pulse Smart Pen and the Echo Smart Pen. And the difference is, in fact, more physical than it is in the software and hardware features. So, for instance, I don't know if you can see what happens typically. Ah. Okay, but this is one of the complaints that you would usually see for the Pulse Smart Pen, that it would roll off the table. And they fixed that with the special shape of this one. Also, the headset you can apply to the Pulse Smart Pen is a special headset, while this one has a normal headphone jack. So you can use your uh, regular headphones from your iPod or whatever. Um, this pen also has a pen tip like this. It's uh, maybe a little more nice to hold because it has a rubber handle and stuff like that. It has more memory, so you can store more hours of audio recordings and uh, notes and everything. But in terms of what happens on uh, the LiveScribe desktop, there seems to be no difference between the two pens, and I would suggest you could just as easily buy the Pulse Smart Pen if it's available. It might be a little bit cheaper, so you can save some money on that account. Before we wrap up, I would like to get back to some of the features of the LiveScribe desktop, which I didn't cover with the Pulse Smart Pen. And um, first of all, I have just written a little text on the second page of my notebook. So we'll see it's being transferred just in a moment here. The second page has now been transferred. We see it right here. I just wrote some text on the page. And the feature I would like to demonstrate to you now is that I can actually search this content. So I could search for the word wrote. And whoops, as you see, it found the word wrote on the second page. You maybe also sense there's an orange indication right here. So I could also search the word this or is. And we see that the word is is found both on page one and on page two right there. Let's try the word another. That's more difficult to to read and absolutely yes it it finds it so this is very amazing it registers the handwriting i did which is not the most beautiful handwriting in the world but it seems to work and i find that's pretty amazing let's take a look at the export features you already saw how you make a, a pen cast you can also share pages not by upload but you can share a pen cast as a file but be aware this type of pen cast is uh, the um, proprietary format so um, I write test and you see that I'm asked to, to choose a file name and the file format is pencast. And you can in you can move that format to another live scribe desktop. So in fact, exporting as a file is only useful if somebody else up here in the import menu could import that pencast into their version of the live scribe desktop. So it is not the way you can share pencast with a lot of people because they would need to install software for it. Um, okay, another way you can share pages would be as an image. You can also share it as a PDF file. And PDF export is, is uh, of course, pretty nice and very useful for upload to CampusNet and so on. And if we take a look at the result from, from this, and we zoom, 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 and we find that Actually, this is very nice vector graphics. So this will print out totally crisp, and that's a very beautiful feature of the pen. Finally, you can also copy from the LiveScribe desktop. So we can right-click, say Copy Page. We can choose it with or without a background. Let's take it with a background, because it's easy for you to see what difference this makes. And now we go to Word, and in Word, we can simply paste the content, Control-V, and there we go. The content from LiveScribe is now pasted inside of Word. One final feature I could highlight about this pen is that you can not only record audio when you're writing on your paper, you can also use it as a dictaphone. So, in fact, if you turn on the pen by holding the button, you just wait until you see a recording time up here in the display, and there you go. So now it's actually recording the audio, whatever happens around me, and I just turn it off by stop recording. And in the LiveScribe desktop, the audio recording will turn up in the list of audio that could also be pencast and otherwise. And um, 
you can export it to other formats and so on. So as you can see, the Echo Smart Pen, the Pulse Smart Pen as well, they are very similar products. And uh, I think it's more what style you are up for and what your, your um, wallet allows you to buy that the, determines if you want to have the one or the other product. But certainly it's an intriguing technology and I can only recommend that you try it out and see if this is something for you. You can use in your teaching to, to share uh, notes, um, model solutions, uh, anything that you would normally write on a piece of paper with a pen, you can share it very easily with your students this way.